Now, if you've been following the news over the last few months, you can't have failed to have heard the word Bitcoin being thrown around. And if you've taken more than a passing interest in it, you'll no doubt also have heard how a lucky few people have made millions out of investing in this mysterious virtual currency. But being a winner in a market like this isn't as easy as you may be told. And it was perhaps inevitable that amidst all the confusion, there'd be con men just waiting to snaffle your profits. And that's something I'm afraid to say some of you have found out the hard way. Money, 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 it can't buy you happiness, but it can make life a whole lot easier. Which is why any new scheme or idea promising to help you make more of it will always draw so many takers. But one apparent way of doing just that has proved particularly seductive to many, investing in Bitcoin, a virtual currency that exists only online. Just like any other currency, it can be used to pay for cars, clothes, holidays, almost anything you want. But the real reason Bitcoin has attracted so much attention is that over the last few years, Bitcoins have seen a staggering rise in value. Incredible as it sounds, just 50 pounds worth of Bitcoin purchased in April 2011 would have been worth more than 700,000 pounds at its height in December 2017 which means that a select and lucky few who both bought and sold at the right time could have made huge profits. Now, best not get too excited. The same is highly unlikely to happen if you invested now. But in any case, many of us actually struggle to get our head around what Bitcoin even is. A Bitcoin? It's Bitcoin. Oh, it's that gold thing in it. Like, is it like an app? Money? I don't really know. I've just heard of it. I haven't gone into it. It's an online-based currency, which doesn't particularly exist as far as I'm aware. I don't really know what they are, but it's some sort of currency that isn't a currency. I've heard it in the internet, but I've never actually used it. I would say Bitcoin is an online currency. I had someone explain it to me once and right over my head. Uh, well, I know it's like cryptocurrency and there's like a lot of controversy about it. Well, you can buy things with it, can't you? Yeah. yeah. But it's not, you don't have cash in hand or anything like that. Yeah. It wouldn't mean anything to me because I don't know what it is. Yeah, it wouldn't really mean anything to me either. No. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's not just me that's confused. But maybe tech expert David McClellan can shed some more light on the subject. So, David, I have heard of Bitcoin, but mm -hmm. that is about as far as it goes. So, how does it work? At its most basic, Bitcoin is an entirely digital currency. It might be called Bitcoin, but there are no coins anywhere. There are no notes. Any money, digital money that I or you own is stored as a series of, of numbers and letters in an entirely digital wallet. Can you turn Bitcoin into cash? Yes, you can, and you can turn cash, traditional cash, pounds, sterling, dollars, whatever, into Bitcoin as well. And people have also been able to buy things, real goods and services. But David warns if it's the prospect of making a fortune out of buying and selling some of this currency that's whetted your appetite, there are some key things to bear in mind. Standing here, I see what an a single Bitcoin is worth. It's a colossal amount. The thing about Bitcoin is it's not regulated. There's no bank at the centre of it. It is a bit of a wild west. They are volatile, they're subject to fluctuation. Investing in Bitcoin is a dangerous, dangerous game to play. Well, that's something computer technician Andrew Dingle from Derbyshire has found out to his cost. Like the rest of us, Andrew had followed the stories of Bitcoin's seemingly unstoppable rise. With a new baby on the way, Andrew and his partner Jody were looking for a way to boost the family finances. And having previously bought some Bitcoin and watched it rise in value, now it felt like the perfect time to sell it for a profit. I was feeling really excited about the prospect of investing in something and actually, for once in my life, making some, some money out of it. To fund his investment, Andrew had taken out a bank loan for £3,800 with the idea that he'd soon be able to pay this back and make a tidy profit. And as soon as he received the money, he went straight to a website that was selling Bitcoin and bought 10 of them. Despite the considerable outlay, he was convinced that the investment would be a success. I just had a feeling that they were going to be worth a lot more. So it was a case of getting now, you know, while the, the going's good. 
Andrew stored all of his Bitcoin in a digital wallet, which is a bit like an online bank account, and kept a close eye on his investment. And over the years, at least, it seemed he was on to a winner. Seeing the, the, the value slowly, you know, go up and, you know, you start getting really excited and that sort of dream that one day it might be worth a lot of money. So chuffed was he with the potential profit it looked as if he'd make from his initial investment that when a shiny new variation of the currency was launched in 2017, Bitcoin Gold, with special opening rates for people who already had Bitcoin, Andrew was keen to take advantage of the launch offer. The value of the Bitcoin I already had still wasn't quite to, to what I wanted, so you know I wasn't going to cash in just yet. And uh, when this new Bitcoin came along, I was thinking, well, that will bump the balance up a little bit more. So I obviously was quite excited. By now, Andrew's Bitcoins were worth a hefty £43,500. But to take advantage of the new offer, he needed to set up a new digital wallet where he could store his currency. Well, the Bitcoin Gold website had links to third parties providing that very service. So Andrew settled on a company called MyBTG Wallet. In order to set up his account, MyBTG Wallet asked Andrew to share his unique digital key, effectively the password giving access to where his existing Bitcoin was stored. Trusting the website, he went ahead and entered the details. I didn't even think anything of it, really. I knew that you had to use your secret phrase to claim the, the new coin in, in the new wallet. But unfortunately for Andrew, my BTG wallet was a phony website set up to con people into sending their passwords so that their Bitcoin account can be completely cleared out. So once he'd entered that information, the scammers behind the website had all the information they needed to help themselves to his currency. Over £43,000 worth of Andrew's Bitcoins were gone in an instant. I went on my wallet again just to have a look and it said sent, the whole lot was gone, sent out, balance zero uh, and I was just, my heart just sank. All Andrew's hopes of making any money from his bitcoins had vanished in a flash. To me that's like winning the lottery. I would have never ever get that sort of money ever in, in my life, you know. Well, surprise, surprise, the company that took Andrew's bitcoins, my BTG wallet, no longer exists. So instead, we contacted the site where he found it, bitcoingold.org. It pointed out that it doesn't provide any direct service to any customer or hold custody of any coins. It said though it does list third-party wallets and exchanges on its site, it categorically refrains from endorsements, and an audit today does not guarantee the site will be safe tomorrow. It told us when it became aware of a problem with the scam wallet business, it immediately removed the listing from its site and implored all the victims to report the fraud to the police. But it went on to say that the nature of cryptocurrency makes it impossible to do anything directly to return the coins, as only the recipient can return them. It urged currency holders to exercise good online safety habits and protect their private keys above all. Sadly, Andrew's story is all too familiar to David McClelland. He says that the complex nature of storing and trading in bitcoins has made it an obvious target for online scams. I've got a wallet here. This has got traditional notes and coins in here. If I lose this wallet, then I've lost that money unless someone gives it back to me. It's exactly the same with a digital wallet. But if you let someone else look after that wallet for you, then it's open to exploitation and open to fraud and that's exactly what we're seeing these exchanges are a big target for hackers well there are other ways too that unsuspecting bitcoin investors have fallen foul of the scammers malcolm edwards from durham was also on the lookout for a place to invest as the new kid on the block bitcoin naturally caught his eye after seeing other people who've invested and made a bit of money, went online to research the, the Bitcoin phenomenon, and that led me to a website, which then turns out to be Greenfields Capital. Greenfields Capital describes itself as the perfect place to start investing and profiting. In essence, it was offering Malcolm the opportunity to place a high stakes bet on the expectation that the Bitcoin currency would rise in value. 
Given the massive increase in Bitcoin he'd already seen, in December 2017, Malcolm decided to take a punt. One of their brokers contacted me and he showed me things online. Depending on the level of what I put in, the returns were greater. If you put 8,000 in, it would be a 5% return. If you put 17,000 in, it would be a 10 to 12% return. So I invested the first initial 17,000. Expecting to make a quick 10% profit, Malcolm used his credit cards to cover the sum. The salesman assured him that his money was safe and that all he needed to do was sit back and wait a week for the bitcoins to rise in value. But two days later, the company contacted him again with another investment opportunity. The trader came on to me and said he's got this other sure thing. Uh, if he invests 30,000, and I said, no, there's no way I'm investing that. He said, well, we'll put 15 in, you put 15 in and we'll return 42% within 48 hours. You're becoming a big, a big player in all of, you know, I suppose maybe what you want to hear. Malcolm was persuaded and agreed. By now, he'd transferred a total of 34,000 in three days. So when he was almost immediately asked to invest even more money, he began to smell a rat. Then they tried again on the following day to invest in another Bitcoin enterprise where they said they had in insider information, they could basically return 50% on the money. And at that point, I said no. I was starting to get a bad feeling that this wasn't right. A week passed, and Malcolm hadn't received any of the money he was promised. After the Tuesday when it, the money didn't return, the sinking feeling settled in that it was all wrong. And I couldn't contact them. The phone number, when you ring it, just says out of service. Then nobody was answering the emails. It all went quiet. Now seriously concerned, Malcolm went online to check the value of his investment on the company's own website. The very next day, when I opened up the, the website, the trading platform, the money was lost, all gone. So it's a scam, but a smart scam. According to Malcolm, the company has since promised to return his funds, but only on the condition, you've guessed it, that he invests even more money. To me, then, you know, that money's trapped. I'll never see it again, so it's lost. I've got to, I've got to look at it that the money is gone. And now all I'm left with is debt. Well, when we tried to contact Greenfield's Capital on Malcolm's behalf, we didn't get a response. So it seems clear that while there are people who've made small fortunes from Bitcoin, there are many others who've lost out too. While backers of the currency firmly believe that it has the potential to make everyday payments easier and cheaper, clearly the risks can be huge. And for now at least, we wouldn't recommend getting involved without very careful consideration and advice. And that's a message both Andrew and Malcolm would thoroughly endorse. I would tread very carefully and don't you know invest unless you really know what you're doing if you're going to do any any sort of trading make sure it's money you can afford to lose thoroughly research anybody you deal with get references before you hand over any money whatsoever <laughs>